All right. I figured we would slow it down. There's been way too many of those fast Sunday with Olas lately. This song is in 71 BPM, man. Up right here, let's go. And then the switch. What's up, everyone? Turn off the sustainiac. Dude, too long of an intro, maybe. But, you know, that's how it is uh, when you have 71 beats per minute of a song right there. But like I said in the beginning, there's just been too many fast ones. You know, maybe I have tried to be in, like, a, the haunted writing mode. And I figured, like, let's just, you know, step it down a notch. Perfect segment and, uh, you know, perfect segue into this new guitar. That is the A1.6 FR. PM Sustainiac Plus. Uh, it's a new Sustainiac guitar. It's absolutely amazing, obviously. And as you saw, I switched between the different modes and just perfect. And just when you have it on like this, it just starts by itself. Love the Sustainiac, man. And these, uh, we always sell these out. So uh, if you want one, it might already be sold out to be, you know, <laughs> to be honest. Anyways, welcome. Sunday with Ola 182. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We got the guitar right there. Was there anything else I wanted to say? No. Let's head into the news. It's my dog. Anyway, then. I think she's happy. She's wagging her tail. Huh? You really think I want to do You really think I want to do it? Guitar World are reporting and saying a true masterpiece crafted for the hard rocking guitarist. The wild audio lives up to its name once again with the Gore Gen, an all new angry, angular, and offset creation. Okay, let's 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 uh, let's process this. Psychwild's latest EMG loaded beast arrives in three distinct finishes: Cocobolo, Psychic Bullseye, Raw Top Buzzsaw, and a special edition Blood River Barrel. All right. L okay. I mean, if there's anything I can say about wild guitars, is that you know they're definitely wild. You know, it comes with the name, I guess. It, it's, it's definitely a little bit out of this world. And, you know, it's cocky in that sense that, you know, that he would release something like this. You know what? I really like it because it's challenging our minds a little bit. I mean, this is how you make a new guitar shape. And obviously, at first, people are going to be like, huh? What the hell is this? But, you know, if he does it and they release this, 
it means that eventually people will get used to it and get used to the body shape and uh, the idea that a guitar can look like this. So in that sense, I really like what Wild Guitar are doing. Now, is it a good looking body shape? It's... It's wild. It's melted Gibson Explorer meets Salvador Dali body shape, sculpted from mahogany and given spiky devil horns with their deep cuts along for easy access to the upper frets on either side of the board. Uh, 24, 6, 25 inch scale length, okay. Uh, 22 frets, Gorgen. What, what is Gorgen? I don't know what Gorgen is. You know, I kind of like this one, where the blood is flowing, you know, it's like a blood river. How cool is that? Anyways, there you go. New model from Sack Wild Guitars. Holy shit. Uh, ballsy as hell. Marco Hietala says Nightwish business side is one of the biggest reasons he quit the band. Because the business side and how the people there work, they are one of the big reasons why I left. This sparked my attention because obviously if you follow my channel, you know that I speak uh, loudly about some things. Labels and management is some of this that I speak loudly about. So I'm interested. In all the bands that I've ever been in, I found out that I'm probably the most kind of courageous person there is. And therefore also I have the inner strength to be the most honest and most fair. And the one who upholds the justice between the people taking care of everyone the most. And that is something that I saw the last years. We're lacking. So these kind of things would have to be taken care of. Okay, Nightwish was a big part of my life and I always, always backed up the music that we did because I love to do the music and uh, that is versatile and ambitious with a lot of all kinds of atmospheres of the world from sensitive and soft into the big pounding metal and all that. So musically, I have no regrets. I'm happy and proud. Okay, so they necessarily don't go into more detail than that. Uh, but basically, basically, he didn't feel the love, I guess. Or the, the, the lovable collaboration that you're supposed to have on business side of things. What I think happened is basically Nightwish is it's such a huge band, man. And I think they just grew too big. And at some point, it's really tough to go from, you know, a smaller management and a smaller team to a bigger team. It's really tough to keep that together and keep the good guys in there. So I would assume that that's, that's what basically happened there. Nightwish became too big and maybe uh, Marco didn't like the way it progressed. And that's what it is right there. Anyways, he uh, released a single together with Tarja Turunen, who's the previous singer of Nightwish. That's the thing right there. I don't think that this is the right uh, pitch because my computer has been <laughs> acting up lately. When I see this, all I can think of is Helldivers too, man. There's a bug coming there very soon behind her. You're saying, ripping her apart. Dude, I love Helldivers. So freaking good, man. Skidro splits with vocalist Erik Grönvall. Hailstorms Lissy Hale to fill in live. Today, Skidrow and Eric Grönva jointly announced that Eric will step down as the vocalist for Skidrow, said Skidrow in a statement. Longtime friend Lissy Hale of Hailstorm will be taking over the vocal duties for the upcoming scheduled four concerts. Eric has decided that the travel and rigors of the road is not con conducive to his overall health and recovery and wants to focus on a lifestyle that's more amenable for his well-being, healing and family. So, for people that don't know, Eric Grönvall is an amazing vocalist from Sweden, obviously. And uh, he's been in Skid Row for a couple of years. I actually met him at an airport and uh, we talked quite a bit. Uh, I think it was in Chicago or something like that. We met at the gate or something like that and we started talking. Basically, the story behind Eric is that he suffered from leukemia a couple of years back and uh, uh, he's had like a bone marrow transplant and then suddenly he went out on tour with Skid Row. And just going out on tour like that, it's freaking tough, man. Especially when you're recovering from fucking blood cancer. I completely understand Eric in this sense. I mean, it's, it's not easy to recover while you're working very hard and traveling and all that. It, it's tough. I respect and understand that Skid Row is a touring band, but since I can't prioritize my health being in the band, I've decided that it's better for me to step aside. I love Skid Row. I have nothing but respect for the guys in the band, but I love and respect my health more. I'm getting stronger and healthier every day, but after consulting my doctor, I need to allow myself more time to recover, which I can't do as the lead singer of Skid Row. That's why I've reached the tough decision to move on. So a, a very a mature decision, in my opinion. Lissy Hale, that's been on Coffee with Ola, is going to fill in for Eric 
uh, for these four shows. And then what's going to happen? It's going to be tough to fill uh, Eric's shoes. I think the only way to do this, if they want to do this, is to bring back Sebastian back right there into the band. Uh, that might be tough, but you know, who knows? I've seen weirder things happen in the music world, so let's go. So I wanted to bring up a really cool thing I saw on Instagram. Uh, you know, Pantera has been in Australia uh, for the past weeks and they did, uh, was it Not Fest and some other shows and shit like that. And with them, they brought, you know, a photographer and the whole crew and, you know, a big team of people. And uh, this photographer, Ross Halfen, he uh, took photos of Pantera in different settings and uh, Obviously, new Pantera, okay, with Zach Wilde and Charlie Benante. Okay, don't get don't get mad for me calling them Pantera, okay? He took a couple of pictures which I thought were cool. We would check him out, and then at the end, I'm gonna give you something really cool. Uh, I saw these. Look at this. This looks fucking great right there. What is that? A rock? Look at that. That's a crashed vehicle right there. How cool? Here they are on their private jet between the cities. I guess. Look at that. That looks fucking great. Whatever that is. Donuts. Ooh, that's. That's what I call good catering right there on the plane. Phil is demonstrating, obviously, how it, how it is to be a rock star. And then we have this picture, which I thought, like, hey, man, that's cool. Rex is sitting there with a note. But what does this note say? I thought this was incredibly interesting because uh, Rex right here, look at him go. Uh, oh, he has the new uh, uh, Vision Pro by Apple right there on his head. He's holding a note, which in my eyes looks like things they need to uh, fix in the set of the Pantera show. I just copied the text of this freaking Instagram photo and pasted it into a, a text edit. I mean, it's not completely right, but, you know, it says mouth. Roll song succumbing. Broke it. I'm just fucking impressed by technique nowadays, man. Holy shit, that's cool. Calm boys, the vibe. Well, broken und to o. Okay, so it's not incredibly accurate, but I mean, the handwriting is not, not very good. Anyways, <laughs> derailing a little bit, sorry. So what are they saying right here? Mouth for war, I guess. Tighten the whole song. Okay, okay, okay. They need to tighten the whole song. Becoming, faster ending, sack wild. Okay, faster ending and becoming. All right, all right. Broken ending. Do they go into frozen rejection? Maybe, I don't remember. Maybe they do. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Walk, the intro. Cowboys, the vibe. So, basically they're writing notes about how, you know, what to work on as a band. I'm not sure if that was uh, on purpose that he would show this. Because, uh, you know, sometimes bands, they, they don't want this to <laughs> kind of go out and uh, in public. It was a small little Easter egg among all of these uh, photographer photos right there. I thought that was kind of cool. So anyways, that, my friends, was the shitty news of the week. <laughs>
All right, let me film this before I crash it into the ground. So I'm bringing up my Tremo verb right here. And I figured we would uh, connect a chug pedal into it and see how it reacts. Uh, I have not tried this combo before and uh, I'm actually a little bit excited. Maybe this will be a, a great tone for uh, the band Animal Horse, you know? Ah, this is great for my back, by the way, walking like this. All right, Animal Horse, it's such a great band, man. Love Animal Horse. First, I need to obviously use some cabinet. Let's use one of those cabinets that's right there. It's my, my Hesu cabinet right here. I have two Hesu cabinets right here. Let's use one of them. I haven't used them in a long time. Sometimes I just pick a cable and I assume it's a speaker cable. It was a speaker cable. There you go. Input, output, USA. Hey, hey, oh. And, uh, yeah, chug pedal. Chug pedal right there. Power on. Let's go. I need a guitar and a cable. Uh, I think I'm gonna take... Let's try this. I'll take my seven string guitar because uh, I want to show it in low tuning, right? I actually have no idea how this is going to sound or how it's going to behave. So uh, this might be weird. With the chug pedal, and now it's all up becoming salesy, uh, it's a preamp, basically. You have something that distortion pedals usually don't have. What makes the chug pedal different from a lot of other distortion pedals is that it has a depth and a presence knob as well, uh, you know, most distortion pedal has EQ like bass, mid, and treble. The chug has that, but it also has depth and presence, which is usually pretty common for an amplifier. So it's basically like a it's basically like a full blown preamp in that sense. But the rectifier is sort of like an old classic style amplifier, so I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. Uh, we'll just just have to see. All right, let's roll this out of the way so you don't get direct contact with the audio. Uh, it could be potentially dangerous, okay? Dude, that's the rectifier on its own right there. Fuck, man. I'm gonna start with the chug pedal dialing everything down, basically setting most of the things on default, okay? <laughs> There you have the gate active. We have the game at 12 o'clock right now, so not that much actually. <laughs> Just filming the settings so I remember. All right, I have, uh, right now I actually have presence on like uh, 12 o'clock, treble at 11 o'clock, mid at 12. I have gain at like one o'clock. Then I have both the low frequency and the high frequency gain dialed up. So let's try it all dialed up. Maximum gain and then maybe maximum level because right now, also oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, let's go. Okay, just as a reminder, this is the rectifier without the truck. Which is 
fucking next one, by the way. And now we're engaging each other. <laughs> Even, like, there's so much game, but since I have the gate, it's okay. I'm sitting in front of the fucking amplifier. <laughs> That's gonna leave a ring right there. Dude, guys, be careful with your hearing. Remember this, okay? Don't do it for too long of time right there. Holy freaking finance. That was great. So there it is, man. The chug pedal into a rectifier right there. That, my friend, sounded freaking brilliant. And now I know a thing or two. I think it's the first time I actually tried the chug pedal as a boost in a rectifier. And not to toot my own horn, because the chug pedal, obviously. But dude, that sounded freaking sick. So I'm gonna send these videos to the artist and hopefully he'll like what he hears. So there you go, that's what happens sometimes, man. And I figured I would bring you guys along for this trip. So uh, if you enjoy this, then great. Uh, Adventures with Ola. Ha. <coughs> comment of a comment. You know, the segment where I take a comment that you guys put in the uh, comment section of a YouTube video and uh, I might talk about it, I might respond, or I might just react to it. And this comment was on uh, one of my posts that I did the other day. It was not actually in the video, it was on my, uh, one of my merch posts. Let's listen. Project Creativity Guy 96. Fucking hell, you are getting all triggered over a silly ass comment. You even said it yourself, Ola, that paying attention to the trolls, etc. Ect, ect, cetera, ect, cetera, will only bring you and attract negative attention. Obviously, uh, what's the context of this comment, you might ask? Well, it's, uh, you know, something happened on TikTok the other week where I got a message sent to me with a very cryptic message, which a lot of people would probably consider himself, would consider being a hate comment. Like this guy said, I don't really pay attention to hate comments or anything like that, but this was just too good to be true. So good that we ended up printing that comment on a t-shirt. Like that. The comment is, your shit is ass, quit the instrument. And uh, this t-shirt, we put that online, on our web shot, and we sold about a hundred of these. So, to the person that uh, made the comment on TikTok, thank you so much. If you want to, you have a t-shirt for free, if you contact us, okay? Your shit is ass, quit the instrument. What a legend, man. So, I mean, obviously, I don't respond to things like this, but this is just too good to be true, man. And see, out of something negative, we made it positive. How about that? There you go. You can get that t-shirt from oldanglandshop.com. Hell yeah. All right. That was it for Sunday with Ola 182 right there. I hope you enjoyed this short little uh, time we had together. If you want to support what we're doing, you can get your shittest ass quit the instrument merch from oldanglandshop.com. We also have this feared cross t-shirt that's freaking sick right there, man. You can get that from oldanglandshop.com as well. Put a thumbs up. Subscribe, comment, and maybe I'll feature you in a comment on a comment section. How about that? See you soon, guys. Thank you. <laughs>